Members, we will now move to convene the second extraordinary session. Without objection, we will substitute the prayer, pledge, and other opening procedures in the regular session for those items in the second extraordinary session. Members, we are going to move to file item number one in the second extraordinary, pardon me, we're going to take up file item number two in the second extraordinary session. Mr. Bonta will present, the clerk will read. Senate Bill 2 by Senator Hernandez and others, an act relating to Medi-Cal, making appropriation therefore. Mr. Bonta, you may open. Good afternoon, members, and thank you, Mr. Speaker. I present to you SBX22, which restructures the taxes paid by managed care organizations in California. In 2014, the federal government informed California that our current MCO tax structure does not meet federal requirements. If California wants to continue drawing down federal funds for the Medi-Cal program, and we most certainly do, the MCO tax structure must be reformed. After months of negotiations between the administration, the legislature, health plans, and advocates, an agreement has been reached, members. The MCO financing proposal contained in SBX 2.2 provides a net benefit to the state budget of over $1.3 billion by using the restructured MCO tax revenues to replace what would otherwise be general fund spending on Medi-Cal. The replacement tax also sunsets in three years. SBX 2.2 is supported by the California Association of Health Plans, the California Chamber of Commerce, Health Access, and the Western Center on Law and Poverty. Members, I can't emphasize enough the importance of the MCO financing proposal before us today. This proposal reflects our priorities and the needs of our constituents. There are over 13 million Californians on Medi-Cal. That's one-third of Californians and half of our kids. We cannot risk losing this much-needed federal funding. We need to continue funding the expansion of health care coverage and protect programs from cuts during future budget deficits. Today's proposal will allow us to do both. I respectfully ask for your I vote. Thank you, Mr. Bonta. Mr. Mainshine, you are recognized. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I think today uh, is an important day for this body. Uh, my colleague, uh, the chairman of the Health Committee, is, has outlined uh, this, this policy in general, I do want to hit on a couple points that I think it's important that we remember. One is this is a $100 million tax cut. We're getting the opportunity to vote on that here today. It is not often in our political careers that we're going to have an opportunity to do that. And when we look at where it went, where it started from, and where it is today, that's a pretty powerful uh, opportunity for each one of us. I also want to say that you know, the, the plans, the health plans support this. They're the ones who have paid this tax. Um, and I think it, for others who have, who have said, um, I think it's disingenuous for others who have said, wait a minute, you're the ones paying it. You want this to happen. You support this. It is less. You are claiming, you the ones who are paying it, are claiming it's a tax cut. People who are not paying it are arguing that. It's a pretty disingenuous argument uh, in my view. This will, this will as we'll hear later, um, provide some pr tremendous benefits to the state, particularly in the areas of the, for the developmental disability community, something that I know Democrats and Republicans in this body uh, care tremendously about. We will get over a billion dollars to our state that would be at risk otherwise. Uh, and then finally, you know, I think all of us, and I know, I know I've heard it here on this floor. I know when my class came in, uh, our class talked about this often, uh, and both the class that um, preceded me, my class, and followed has talked about doing what's right for California. It's not about doing what's right for the Democrat Party or the Republican Party. It's doing what's right for the Republican Party. <laughs> I, I was on a roll until then. Uh, it's, do, it's doing what's right for Californians. That's what, that's what we are here to do. And if you look at it, and where I was going with that is Republicans and Democrats and the Brown administration worked hard on this, came together and worked hard on this. Didn't, 
not everybody got exactly what they wanted. And maybe each one of those three would have done something slightly differently. But collectively, we came up with something that's really good. Uh, and so I'm very pleased here today to support this. It's good for our communities. It's good for our state. Uh, and I would urge an I vote. Thank you, Mr. Bainshine. Mr. Daly, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I would like to just uh, thank both the colleagues who spoke before me. I'd like to put a uh, – I stand in support of this legislation. I want to put a face to uh, what, what this bill is going to do for uh, developmentally disabled folks in my community. Uh, I, I represent the largest district in the state of California. It's 25,000 square miles. I have a, a, a regional uh, center in Redding, which uh, serves most of my district. So if you live in Modoc County, which is about 150 miles from Redding, that's the closest place that you, get, uh, you, you go to get your services. Likewise, for rural health clinics, uh, we have long-term care facilities that are attached to our critical care access hospitals. I have six of those in my district that... Uh, in the previous legislation that was passed, AB 97, uh, they were asked to pay back money that they had already uh, received. And in that case, we've been fighting for the last couple of years trying to keep those long-term care facilities alive. So, for example, the hospital that I use, and I know that many of you members have been uh, to my home and, and to my district and know just how far it is to get to um, the closest health care uh, providers and services, Fall River Mills, Marriage Memorial Hospital, is the one that... Uh, my constituents use that live closest to me. The next closest one would be in uh, Reading or it, it, further even to San Francisco. So if you have an a, a elder who is in long-term care and uh, you wanted to visit them, you'd have to go several hundred miles uh, to the next uh, long care, long-term care facility. So I'm supportive of this tax, uh, support of this bill, and I appreciate uh, the governor and the colleagues uh, on my side of the aisle and along with the, the colleagues on the other side of the aisle working together to do something great for California. Thank you, Mr. Daly. Mr. Jones, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. I also rise in support of SB2 and uh, stand here today um, recognizing that in the six years that I've been here, this may be one of the most difficult I votes I've ever casted. But it didn't have to be. Uh, as been stated previously, this, I believe, represents the best of the assembly and the best of the legislature. When three distinct groups, the governor's office, Democrats and Republicans, can come together and work out a plan that uh, gets us closer to where we need to be to, to work for our voters, our citizens, and our taxpayers. As been said, not everybody got everything they wanted. But in the rule of negotiations is when everybody gets most of what they want and not everything that they want, that's probably a pretty good deal. And I think today is a pretty good deal. There's been a lot of uh, uh, talk uh, from political experts in my district that this is going to hurt you, that casting this vote may make it more difficult in the future. Well, you know what? That may be so. But I ran for this office to represent my district, my taxpayers, my voters, and the entire state of California. It's been brought up that we uh, made a pledge to not support new taxes, some of us. But, and there's a lot of debate in Washington right now about abolishing the IRS and restructuring the federal uh, income tax and the way the federal government uh, brings in revenue. Well, ladies and gentlemen, to abolish the IRS, you would have to vote for a new tax to replace what the IRS is bringing in. So I stand today in support of SB2 because I believe that it is tax reform. It leads to a $105 million tax decrease for those that are paying the tax, and has been stated uh, previously on the floor, has little or no impact on the individual taxpayers of California. And I will close with this. Mr. Speaker, permission to, to read. Without objection. Like Milton Friedman famously said, I am in favor of cutting taxes under any circumstances and for any excuse, for any reason, whenever possible. 
And today, ladies and gentlemen, in the assembly, in the state of California, we have the opportunity to cut taxes. I ask for an aye vote. Thank you, Ms. Jones. Madam Speaker, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members, February 29th doesn't come around all the time, and neither does an opportunity like the one this bill presents today. The bipartisan agreement reached by the legislature and the governor, as already stated, prevents California from losing federal funds, helps more Californians access health care, and provides more than $1 billion in general fund savings that we can use to address some of our state's other priorities. Baseball season hasn't even started, but we've already seen a great triple play. With the impending loss of $1 billion in federal funding and quickly growing Medi-Cal caseload, it was critical for us to work together on an MCO financing reform, and we did. I'm particularly happy that today we're also able to dramatically increase, also you've heard on this floor, funding for the care of Californians with developmental disabilities, which has been a priority for the Assembly since last year's budget negotiations. Passionate advocates for this funding should be proud of their persistence in shining a bright light on what is terribly uh, one of the most important issues. I do want to take a minute to thank and acknowledge the Republican leader for his willingness to engage in this discussion and on this package. Thank you. While in some ways this may be a difficult vote for some Republicans, I really hope this becomes one of the many more issues that Democrats and Republicans can work together on, even on tough issues for one party or the other, to make the kind of progress that all of our constituents deserve. Today's vote is an important step in maintaining the improved fiscal condition that we've achieved. I also want to thank uh, the Assembly member from Alameda and certainly everyone who's been involved in the discussions and the negotiations that led to today's successful conclusions. I ask for your aye vote. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Seeing no additional discussion on this item, Mr. Bonta, you may close. Thank you, members, for your, your thoughtful comments. I just wanted to share my thanks and appreciation as well to the administration, to our Department of Health Care Services Director Jennifer Ken in particular, as well as our speaker and our pro tem and the plans and all the other leaders who helped put this very important deal together that's very important for California. I respectfully ask for your I vote. With that, the clerk will open the roll. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Members, this is a 54 vote bill. Mr. Holden moves a call.